now we'll be seeing a text called panchadasya so this panchadasya means we can take it in different way actually this is called as vedanta panchadasya but popularly known as panchadasya so if we go by sanskrit पंचदश प्रकरण प्रकरणानि अस्मिन् ग्रंथे सन्ति इति पंचदश सो दैट मीन्स इज ब्यूटिफुल दैट द टेक्स्ट बाय इट्स और इन इट्स 15 चैप्टर्स आर देयर एक्चुअली समटाइम्स बीइंग ऑल द चैप्टर्स आर इंडिपेंडेंट some people look at as 15 books but it is better to take as a chapter rather book so because there are 15 chapters that's why it is called as panchadasya we have different ways of presenting but another person from andhra pradesh his name is called rayagolu lingana somayaji who has given a different view about the word of panchadasy because generally we put this two way in a book where there are 15 chapters is called panchadasi or another one we say that panchadhikanam dasanam prakrananam samaharah so that means it is a collection of 10 plus 5 so it is a numerical <coughs> explanation whereas this is somayaji he gives a beautiful point which is a really interesting to observe so he takes the help of amarakosha from amarakosha so he brings this panchadasi means of course indirectly the full moon so how he brings very very nicely pakshanto पंचदशो सो इज इज पक्षा तो पंचदश्य सो दैट मीन्स दैट इफ यू लुक एट दैट बोथ न्यू मून एंड फुल मून इज कॉल्ड एज पंचदश बिकॉज द पक्ष कम्स टू एन एंड दैट फोर्थ नाइट कम्स टू एन एंड so either on new moon day or full moon day so both the new moon and full moon can be called as panchadasi but he takes indirectly very nicely indirectly means as a moonlight so full moon not new moon why because which is very relevant for us that's why i have taken up this point when in shamo the scorching sun it is so painful that you cannot look at even though we need sunlight with the help of sunlight everything happens but we cannot look at we need to protect our eyes we need to protect our skin everything there is so much pain that time how the moonlight is very pleasing not only it gives the light also it helps to relieve from the sunlight whatever sunbite we have whatever pain we have with reference to sunlight that is being healed by the moonlight 
So also here is being taught. When a Muksha looks at Vedantic texts, where many things have been taught directly, indirectly, lot of struggle you have to do, many things you have to info. The direct approach, indirect approach, sometimes a Vedantic, a Mumukshu also gets disoriented. Whether I am approaching properly or not, whether the Guru is right or not, whether the methodology of teaching is right or not, because unless there is trust, there is a big factor we will see in the first uh, first sloka itself. So there are many factors that a mumukshu may get disoriented, in fact gets disoriented. So the Vedanta Shastra literally becomes sunlight in the summer. And this Panchadasi exactly works like moonlight to Sudan. Because the unique approach of this Panchadasi is that it really brings one one aspect, we will see what is the definition of Prakarana, being a Prakarana, we will talk about that point. It very nicely elaborates, for example, people exposed to Vedanta for decades, they have confusion with reference to Maya. Great, great scholars do say that look, when Vedantins cannot argue, that time they bring Maya. So always there is a confusion with reference to Maya for many scholars. Whereas Panchadasi explains the concept of Maya in a beautiful way, very simplest format that I have ever come across. Like there are many aspects of this text, something to be really appreciated. Moreover, Regarding this text, I would like to give the background so that I will come to the author. That it is believed, the story goes, how far it is true, really, I don't know. So there was a person that his name is Velamkunda from Velamkunda area, Ramaraya Kavi from Andhra Pradesh, Godavari. He was a great Vishishta Dvaitin person. In fact, he loves to criticize Advaitins. Whenever he gets an opportunity, he really does what he wants. The story goes that one day when he was crossing the road, discovered that one of his neighbor is reading something. He became curious and went and asked, what are you reading? And he said, I am reading this Panchadasi text, Vedanta Panchadasi. Oh, so is it related? Related to Advaita Vedanta. Okay, will you please give me that book? So that I will write a critic on it. So I will try to find out where they are wrong. And of course that person gave because this person is known for that, so they handed, he handed over. It seems that he went through the book, Panchadasi. After going through the Panchadasi book, he completely converted himself to Advaita Vedanta. In fact, his two works, when we were studying, I really broke my head to get commentary on Bhagavad Gita, somehow we managed to get, but so far the commentary on <coughs> Shankara Shankara Vaishyam that is related to uh, Brahma Sutra, I have not got it. Very voluminous book on Bhagavad Gita. 
who has taken pain to criticize every bit of Vishishta Advaitin later on, because he knew in and out of Vishishta Advaitin. And the way he has criticized, pointed out the fallacies in the thinking process, something to be really admired. However, coming to the point, means this text is so clear that one cannot miss it. And moreover, as we have discussed very carefully, that this text, Panjadasi, being a Prakarana Grantha. So when we say Prakarana Grantha, we also need to look at Sastraika Desa Sammandham Shastra Karyan Taresthitam Ahu Prakarana Nama Grantha Vedam Vipaschita This is the definition of Prakarana. So that means the learned people call that as a Prakarana Grantha. Generally, it is called as a preliminary text to Vedanta. But actually, it need not be preliminary text. We have to be very clear. For example, when you look at Viveka Churamuniya. Yes, Viveka Churamuniya happens to be a Prakarana Grantha. Looks like a preliminary text. But later on, when you start reading further more and more, it is more than a preliminary text. But general translation of Prakarana Grantha is, oh, it's very preliminary text. What are you studying? I am studying Prakarana Grantha. Oh, that means you are just elementary student. This is how people judge. Oh, I am studying now, do you know what? Studying Upanishad. Oh, oh, that means you are medium. Now I am studying Brahma Sutra. Wow, that means you are somebody. Then you can say, I am studying Siddhi Granthas. <laughs> Like election, Naskaram Siddhi. Okay, you are somebody, you understand. Please understand here the point is that when you look at Prakarana Gantha, it is related to a part of Veda Esrutya. Because the Sastra's purpose is what? To make you understand what you want, what are the means and adhikari, what we call as insert anubandha chatushthaya. We have discussed this anubandha chatushthaya long back. Okay? So this anubandha chatushthaya will bring it later on some other time. So this anubandha chatushthaya is being discussed. But what happens? Sastra does not have that much time to unfold each and every aspect. It will only highlight what is the goal. The goal is to be liberated. Then what is the means? And how to go about it. That's all. But being a mumuksha, whether you are prepared or not, if there is some variation in you, how to go about it? What happens to you? What should not happen to you? Those points are not being discussed in Shastra elaborately because Shastra doesn't have time to do all these things. Shastra understands that you are a qualified person. The moment Aam Brahmasmi is being said, Tattvamasi is being said, Shastra expects that you understand it. That's why Shastra does not talk in details even though in teaching we try to highlight, we try to explain. But that is not purpose of Shastra. Whereas in Prakrana Grantha, one aspect, even though same subject matter, but one aspect is very elaborately dealt. So that is the beauty of studying Prakrana Grantha. That's why if we look at many people say, oh, you are studying Prakrana Grantha, please understand. Prakrana Grantha not only clears your doubt but also it helps to do mananam and niti dhyasana or else what will happen you will become a parrot and 
you will become a mechanical person. So that's why we make sure to look at Prakranarantha time to time very carefully. So here being this Prakranarantha, interestingly, this Prakranarantha is attributed to, very carefully I am using it, Vidyaranya Muni. As his name is Vidyaranya, actually he was Vidyaranya. So Aranya means if you want to take, okay, Vidyaranya, why he was Vidyaranya is different meaning, okay? But Vidyaranya, Aranya means called forest, Vidya means knowledge, forest of knowledge. So that means really he was embodiment of knowledge. Actually, Vidyaranya Muni, even though everybody talks Panchadas is written by Vidyaranya, but actually it is co-authored. Vidyaranya Muni and Bharati Tirtha Swami. Both of them have written this. So now question may arise, who is this Vidyaranya? Actually, Vidyaranya was born in 13th, 14th century and was a great person. He had a brother whose name was called Sayana and his name is called Madhava. In fact, he was called as Madhava Acharya and this other person was called Sayana Acharya. Who has written? Sayana has written. Sayana and both Vidyaranya Madhava. Both of them have written commentaries on Veda, especially all Karmakandas commentaries you will find by Sayana Acharya. So whenever we look at all Vedas commentaries only by Sayana Acharya. Excellent. Like how for Vedanta Upanishads Adi Shankara Acharya is being respected. For entire Veda, mainly Karmakanda aspect, the commentary of Sayana is being respected. So he was none other than the brother of Vidyaranya Muni. And interestingly, the story, the facts and figure goes, of course there are some myth, some con confusion and conclusion, that uh, some people say that Vidyaranya, before becoming sannyasa, means when he was a Madhava, that time he became a minister. Need not be. Who I and how will see later on this point. Actually, interestingly, Vidyaranya had some type of issue with reference to wealth. And to overcome that, he did Puraschanam, especially Gayatri Puraschanam. But he did not get any blessing. <laughs> that was his frustration. Later on, he was being blessed in such a way that you will not get wealth, but whomsoever you will bless, that person will get wealth. <laughs> so because of this blessing of Mother Gayatri in the form of Goddess Lakshmi, in fact, he could establish Vijayanagaram Empire Kingdom because he blessed two people called Hukka and Bukka and later on first Bukka became the first king of Vijayanagaram. So because of that reason this Vijayanagaram Empire could come up with his blessing and continued. Then there is, there is Pisu. There was another person called Madhava who happens to be the minister. So people what they do is they say, look, this Vidyaranya was the minister. 
okay up, it is up to the historians to find out really this vidya this madhava or that madhava because the one who was minister he didn't have any brother whereas vidyaranya had sayana acharya his brother madhava so however there is a confusion let us not get into but the fact is that because of the blessing of vidyaranya muni the vijayanagar empire could come could flourish and when you look at this vidyaranya in short in fact when muslim was so strong a lot of destruction that's why the vijayanagar came let me not get into because this history has never taught to us nor unfortunately we have recorded anything morals vidyaranya didn't have any other choice to uh, bless a person to establish vijayanagar because vijayanagar was one of the most important kingdom of india to protect hinduism which spread almost all south india how coming back to the point so when the muslim emperors invaded destroyed what are the things they did you cannot believe it that time vidyaranya had taken lot of pain to reestablish the dharma in fact he was one of shankaracharya of singeri peetha because in if you look at this history of shingeri that uh, headed by first sureshwar acharya one of the great whom, whom we uh, fondly call as bartika kar because he is the person who wrote commentaries on shankara bhashyam his guru that wherever adi shankaracharya has written something different he has no it would have been this way it could have been this way so that's why he is called as bartika kar such a great person and always shingari pitham is being respected highly with reference to scholarliness every acharya of stringeri pitha till now that the shastra gyanam is there with them so interestingly this vidyaranya muni also was one of the acharya uh, one of the shankara acharya of stringeri pitha but interestingly this vidyaranya muni had three gurus prior to sanyasa he had two more gurus so the gurus name will be because i was breaking my head in different ways different way to look at so when we look at his gurus the first after uh, his um, sanyasa his guru name was shankarananda which is being reflected in the first verse itself that we will see but when he was that madhav acharya he had guru bharati titha who is the co-author of this book also called shri kantha acharya so in short he had three gurus before sanyasa two and after sanyasa shri shankarananda that's why here in this text being after this is written after being sanyasa that's why he has prostrated to his guru called shri shankara nanda will be seen in the first verse itself in the past chapter but interestingly 
when we were talking about this that this text this panchadashi especially works like moonlight giving a soothing effect remember the past chapter is not going to be soothing at all in fact here little bit more pain you will go through because of this is viveka prakarana we will be seeing tattva viveka prakarana and as you know very well where you the viveka is being exercised please understand wherever viveka means discriminative faculty and the two tattva means reality discriminative faculty related to reality so when it is being exercised definitely your ego will not support because if the viveka is stronger your ahankar your raga dvesha will feel that it is a scorching sun you understand in fact you will never be available somehow you will try your best to escape in fact the first chapter will do that later on it will try to you know slow down don't worry and interestingly this is how the teaching is that this 15th chapter is divided into 555 even though as i told you co authored by both vidyaranya muni and this bharati tirtha swami bharati tirtha some people say that first six chapters written by vidyaranya muni next next nine chapters written by vidyaranya muni some people say no no first 10 chapters written by vidyaranya muni later on other five written by varadita but let us not get into confusion whether it is 6 or 10 or whatever numbers but we can say this that it is co-author if we try to look at the five 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 where comes viveka prakaranam first five is called viveka prakaranam because always the chapter has name viveka as we will be seeing in details like we have you know that um, <clears throat> different type of thing we will see then next pipe is called as deepa prakarana where deepa is being highlighted will be seen is one when time permits of course and third one is called ananda prakarana so first pipe viveka prakarana second pipe deepa prakarana then last five is called ananda prakarana interestingly some of the author some of the commentator do divide in their own way like in bhagavad gita how some people divide that first six chapter is called tat then tvampada first tvampada first six chapter that is tvampada second six chapter tatpada and finally asipada you that are okay how people say with reference to bhagavad gita so also here some author believes in their opinion they do say that this first five chapter is called sat second five chapter is called chit 
and the last five chapter is called Ananda. Maybe we have to understand this way, not that only it deals with Sat, it deals with Chit or it deals with Ananda. Predominantly it deals with Sat, predominantly it deals with Chit and predominantly it deals with Ananda. Remember, when any work is being taken up, especially in this teaching tradition, Guru Shishya Parampara. The humility is being expressed. Because this Guru Shishya Parampara is only continuing, is only flowing, not because of anything, but only because of the humility. That's why beautifully one horse goes nicely, which is really very nice, interestingly. That Yadatra Dushanam Kinchit Tatra Tesham Mamei Vatat. I will come into the translation part. Yadatra Dushanam Kinchit Tatra Tesha Mamei Vatat. Yadatra Bhushanam Kinchit Tatu Tesha Na Bai Mama. What a humility. So the Shishya, the disciple says, in my action, in my teaching, in my writing, whatever I do, if there is any fallacy, if there is any deficiency, whatever deficiency one may find, one may discover, remember, definitely that does not belong to my master. The fallacies that I see in my life, whatever happens, definitely that does not belong to my master, but it belongs to me. Whereas, if there is any good thing are found, definitely that does not belong to me, definitely. Certainly, it is not mine. It goes to my teacher. So that is the humility. That is the gratitude. Because unless this sort of gratitude comes, teaching, will never enter. That's why when people they talk that you know he is my trained philosopher and guide. You understand this point? Sometimes I hear oh Swamiji is my friend, philosopher, guide. It does not work. not there, not it developed, definitely this self-knowledge will not end. It will always vanish above your head. You will think that you know, but in reality you will not know. How and why I am highlighting this point? Because you can see in the first verse, the first chapter, this Vidyaranya Muni, such a great person who doesn't have to do prayer, who doesn't have to do anything because such a great person, every aspect, but he starts the text with a prayer. Let us chant this first verse, then we will discuss later on. Namasri Sankarananda Guru Padambujanmane 
नम श्री शंकरानंद गुरु पादाबुजन्मने सविलास महामोह ग्राह ग्रासकर्मणे नम श्री शंकरानंद गुरु पादाबुजन्मने सविलास महामोह ग्रास ग्रासकर्मणे such a beautiful way to look at of course we'll try our best to see as much as detail possible if you all cooperate with me and if you do not cooperate with me definitely i will try to complete the text as quick as possible please close your eyes शांत शांत शांति है